Hello there and welcome back to my workshop. Progress continues on my chest of drawers and here we are. I'm very happy with the progress. I have my vertical drawer dividers here joined with sliding dovetails. And these are actually on the back of my chest of drawers. They're not really needed here, but I needed the practice. So I went ahead and made them. And now I have to make the good ones, the ones you'll see on the front. And uh, in this show, what we'll be doing is making one here. You'll see that. And uh, then we're also going to talk about the other components that we need in this chest. And that's going to be runners, which support the drawer as it slides in and out. Kickers, which keep the drawer from tipping down when you pull the drawer out. And also drawer guides, which guide the drawer from side to side. So a lot to do here. Let's have a closer look at the sliding dovetail. Um, here is a practice one I did. You can see the dovetail socket here. And here is the dovetail vertical divider and it goes in like this. Makes a nice strong joint. And then uh, later on the runner goes in here. This is a stub tenon. Goes into the back like that. And then I'll slide this out. You can see that the tenon actually intrudes into the socket there. But uh, what I did was I made two quick saw cuts and just cut a notch there so that my dovetail fits like that. And then uh, later on, what I'm going to be doing is uh, gluing on the drawer guide like that. So that is basically what we need to do. Let me show you one other thing. And that's around the back here. I plowed a groove for my stub tenon. And I could have also just chopped a shallow mortise, but uh, either way works. And I thought what I do is probably in the making of this, I'll do it both ways and see which way uh, I prefer. So there we go. What I'm going to do now is pull this apart and we're going to get set up to make that first sliding dovetail. There you are. And here is my horizontal drawer divider marked for my first saw cut. I've got some pencil lines here. The outer ones represent where my vertical divider goes. And the inner lines are my scribed lines for my saw cuts. Now there are many ways to make dovetails as usual. And I was looking for a way that didn't require specialized jigs that take a long time to make or specialized tools. And I came up with this way that I think works really well. So let me show you what I did here. I made a little guide out of a scrap of wood. This has a one in four slope on it. And all I need to do is place this right on my cut line. This will guide my saw as I go. Get it started here. Put that right on the line. Tighten it down. And this will always hold my saw at the right angle. Now I, uh, I tried a cross cut back saw and that worked okay. But what really worked well was this flexible flush cut saw for a couple of reasons. It has really fine teeth for a really clean cut. But most important of all is that it's a flexible blade and that allows my fingers to hold it right on the guide at all times as I saw away. If my hand drifts a little bit this way, the blade is flexible and these fingers can keep it right on the guide. So that's, um, that's important and very useful for this kind of application. So um, let's start that cut. Okay, it's the first cut. 
Now I turn this around so that I can always be using my left hand to hold the guide and my right hand for sawing. Okay, now what I am going to do is use my crosscut saw to make a relief cut right down the middle to make chiseling a little bit easier. Okay, now what I need to do is just chop a lot of this out and I'll finish up with my router plane. Got to be a little bit careful, I don't want to chip out too much. I'm going to come in from the other side, make sure I don't have any chip out. Okay, as close as I want to go, I'm going to finish up now with my router plane. It's probably about right. Okay, there you have it. Rather precise socket for my dovetail. 
and I've reset here and cleaned up a little bit and now it's time to make the corresponding dovetail that fits into that socket uh, here it is I've marked my gauge lines with my wheel gauge and I've penciled in my dovetail slopes and they're uh, for reference only I'm not really going to pair directly to them but uh, I'm going to refer to them as I go so I'm going to remove most of the waste just by eye and then uh, we'll fine tune it with another technique and you'll see that in just a moment Okay, now I'm getting pretty close and I'm going to switch to another method of pairing and that's using my bench hook here and just going to place it on like this and secure it. Nice and even. Now I'm going to be using my saw guide to guide my chisel. Set it like that. And for shims, I'm going to use common playing cards. Mm -hmm. These make great shims. And uh, I'll show you how that works. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think I need eight. Uh, and I just sandwich them underneath like this. Place my guide on top. I think I need one more. Let's try that. And now we'll, uh, we'll give it a try here. I think I'm good there. Take one card away. Okay. Card by card, I go. I think I'm 
come close enough. Now I come in from the other side, put my cards back. Good. That's good. See that saw guide comes in real handy for keeping it right on the right angle that I need. Mark that again. Okay. Okay, Oop. let's give it a try here and see, I think I'm close but I don't think I'm there yet. Nope, got a ways to go. All right, get back here you, okay, try it again. Okay, there you have it. So now, I do that five more times, and I've got all of my dividers done, and then we're going to move on to the, uh, the uh, what are we doing next? What do we have to do next? Um, the gluing on the... Not yet. No, no. Then we have to do the... Uh, Then we have to do the runners, kickers, and the drawer guides. Finally, I got that line right. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back.
and our sliding dovetails are completed. Here's the last three that I did, and here's the other three. And I thought they turned out just great. Uh, didn't use any special tools or uh, special jigs, uh, just used uh, some playing cards and a block of wood, really, and they turned out great. So very happy with them. And now it's time to move on to the runners. Here's one runner. I made this on my table saw. I'm perfectly happy using power tools for this sort of thing. It's kind of tedious and not much fun, so why not? <laughs> this goes in here like that. And it's actually a runner for this drawer and this drawer. And then I have runners here, like that, and like that. And these are also kickers for the drawer underneath. When I pull this drawer out, it can't tip down because these runners are acting like kickers. I'm going to put a runner here, 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 and here, and they will serve as kickers for these two drawers down here. And then up top here, I've got kickers that go across like this. So there we are. Now, um, I mentioned before that uh, I'm going to plow grooves in these dividers to house the tenons. And I've plowed one already. There's one there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. And then up top, I talked about chopping mortises. That's another way to do it. So I chopped a mortise up here. And if you look down in the description box, you'll see links of me doing this because I've done both of those things before a number of times on previous shows. So um, I think we're all set here. This is about where I want it to be. Next time, we're going to start with the glue up. And that's the part that's got me worried. It's going to be a really extensive glue up, and I don't want to have any mistakes, obviously. So um, I'll be giving that a lot of thought, and we'll be starting, like I said, first thing on the next show. So until then, thanks for stopping by, and see you next time. Wasn't that great?